of um, new webinars. Um, we're excited to be reaching out to our business community uh, in this way during these times. Um, with South Down College having over 1,500 apprentices and the South West having many, many more, um, we felt that our webinar should reach out to our apprentice employers. Um, as you can imagine, we've been absolutely inundated with um, questions um, around furloughing, what we can do, can't do. Um, we've had businesses um, in need of reassurance as well during this time. So we are really, really delighted to introduce to you our panel today. I'm going to introduce our panel. So we've got Lawrence Ruin, who's the principal and CEO of South Devon College. We've got Sharon Robbie, who is the director of the Devon and Cornwall Training Network Partnership. Oh, Sharon, better get that right. Um, Devon and Cornwall Network. Um, we've got Keith Miller, who's the managing director of Cabana Homes. And we've got Jonathan Holmes, who is the group director of Blenheims. So I'm really, really pleased to introduce them all. Um, just before we start, if you do have any questions during this session, um, please use the question function, which is at the right hand side of your screen. Um, any questions that come through, we'll try and pick them up at the end. Um, that, that will be time dependent, so we'd like to answer all your questions, but we'll see how we go. Um, if we don't manage to answer them, um, we will put together a frequently asked question um, that will be linked to Southam College's website so that you can review them, um, review them then. Um, there will be a follow up that will come after this, this session and there will be a recording as well so you can come back um, and review afterwards. OK, so firstly, I'd like to come to Lawrence Bruin. Um, so my first question is, uh, is for you. Um, and I'd like to um, ask you how the college, um, South Devon College, is um, responding to the current pandemic. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Emily. Um, well, there's been a lot going on at the college. Um, I'll, I'll start with a bit of a general overview, really. Lots of innovation. Um, like everybody, we're, we're moving quite rapidly. Things are changing um, very quickly, but in some cases for, for the better. Um, and we've certainly accelerated our digital transformation strategy. We just put in place a new two-year plan. We've probably um, done 18 months of that in the last two or three weeks, which is great news. Um, the majority of the college buildings, although they're closed, we're still very much open for business. Um, and that's a really important message. Um, the majority of our staff are working from home. The majority are um, working with things like Microsoft Teams, uh, Skype, uh, other ways through social media as well of keeping in touch with our employer partners. But particularly uh, the majority of our students, they're now learning online. We're keeping them engaged with learning because it's really important. Um, we don't want to come back in September or have students leaving us to go back into the workplace and, and find that they've had a long break. So we're, we're working really hard and we're finding students are actually enjoying that, that they're um, whilst they enjoyed their Easter break, that they wanted to, to, to engage with us. They wanted to learn. So we've seen a huge and very significant move to virtual, online and blended learning. We already had quite a lot of that in place, but that's really accelerated. Um, and innovation is one of our five core values. So uh, we're doing things even more rapidly than ever and changing the way that we do quite a lot. Um, another major change I think is worth just talking about is our normal engagement activities. Um, our desire to make sure that students and apprentices and all of our learners um, are ready for when we return to uh, what will hopefully be some form of, of normality in, in the autumn term. Um, and we want to keep them engaged. So we've got um, our open events are becoming online and virtual. We kick those off on the 4th of May, but we're also keeping students and prospective students and apprentices in touch through lots of different activities as well. So we're continuing one-to-one -one information advice and guidance um, and making sure that we're supporting our community as well. So one of the other things I've been really proud of, and if you follow our social media, you might have seen some of this already, um, is that we've been donating PPE, personal protective equipment, to the local NHS, to the hospitals, medical centres and care homes. Um, but we've also used some of our expertise and our specialisms and our hardware to manufacture and produce um, using our 3D printers, visors, which are used on the front line in COVID wards and in medical centres and care homes. Um, and it started quite small with one or two people. We've now got about 20 employers, businesses locally helping us with that, some of them 
small, some of them much larger. And we've produced over 750 visors now, which have been manufactured and delivered. Um, we've raised money in sponsorship and um, working in partnership with lots of people. It's been a real community effort. We've been really proud to, uh, to be helping with that. Donating food to reform and others to help with um, those in need, particularly young people who are more vulnerable or whose families are being um, who are struggling financially. So we've, we've given a lot of food as well as some um, other resources to help that uh, continue, as well as providing our own students who are in, in receipt of free meals. And we've had to change the way that we deliver that and the way that we provide that support as well um, very rapidly. Um, and uh, support for businesses, absolutely critical at this time. Um, what's going to happen to the economy? There's some really uh, challenging times ahead. We know that. But what we want to do is keep supporting our businesses now. A lot of people are pivoting their business models. Um, so we're responding to that by providing skills and training online resources and other help where it's needed to allow them to do that, mainly around the digital skills side, um, but we can also help with some of the marketing. So we've been doing a lot there and working closely with our colleagues at the Torbay Business Forum, Southwest Business Council, TDA, uh, Devon County Council, economic development teams, et cetera, um, and starting to think ahead now about what the recovery plan looks like, about what businesses need, not just at the moment, um, but also what they're going to need over the coming months and particularly as we start to see the sort of the, the gradual emergence from from lockdown. So there's loads going on. Um, we'd love to keep in touch with with you, with others. Um, you can either contact us through social media. Emily and I are, are regulars um, and we love interacting that way. Um, or we've got a dedicated employers at southdevon.ac.uk email address. And we want to hear what more we can do and what we need to be thinking about to prepare for later in the summer and early into the autumn and um, to make sure that we can get uh, Tor Bay back on its feet as quickly as possible. Brilliant. Thanks, Lawrence. Um, so that's obviously really exciting to hear all of the things that, that we're doing. And um, certainly I'm proud to be part of that as well. Um, are you able to just give us an idea as to how the college is supporting the apprentices and employers during this time specifically? Yeah, of course, there's a lot going on there. I mean, we, we probably many of you will know we work with with around about 1200 employers every year um, and around about 1700 apprentices. So it's a huge part of what we do at the college. Um, our curriculum teams, those teaching and learning specialists who those of you who have got apprentices or work with the college will know um, very well, they are providing engaging teaching and learning um, for the apprentices. So there's a whole range of online resources and activities. Um, if apprentices are struggling to act um, get through using online resources, then we're providing a more traditional workbook approach through the post. Um, but we're also offering where we can hardware so that um, those who need to keep learning online can do that. So we, we've been making sure that, that any apprentices, and there's sort of three groups of apprentices really, there are those who are still working actually um, in some of the, the key sectors. That, that's quite a small group, but they are still there. Um, some construction apprentices, some of the other frontline services. Um, then we've got uh, online activity for their sort of one day a week where they'd normally be away from, from, away from the job. Um, We've got another, which is the larger group of apprentices who are furloughed, um, and, and many of those have got much more time on their hands. So we're working really hard to support that much larger group of apprentices. Um, and we're really proud that employers have, have been keeping apprentices on their books um, in, in most cases and furloughing them in, in um, a lot. So those, those apprentices are, are engaged. We're keeping them warm, we're keeping their learning going so that they're ready to hit the ground running when businesses open their doors um, at the end of the lockdown period. And then there's a the final group of apprentices who, who perhaps had, had to be made redundant or there's um, a break in their learning because they can't continue for some reason. Um, so it's about keeping them engaged and warm um, and making sure that if they, if they don't have a, an apprenticeship any longer that, uh, that we're working to find one for them to go back into um, and the demand we think there is going to be pretty good. Um, uh, Emily and her team, particularly our workplace coordinators, who are the guys who engage directly with you as businesses and employers, um, they are very much working hard. Um, keeping in touch, making sure that apprentices know what support's available, making sure that employers um, know that apprentices, if they are furloughed, can keep studying um, and that it's really important and how they can access that. 
um, and we can also signpost you. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, almost an overwhelming amount of information about the support that's available for businesses of all sizes. So we may not be the experts, but we can make sure that we signpost you through the Torbay Business Forum, through the TBA websites, or directly to people like Torbay Council, Teambridge South Hands District Councils, or Devon County Council, depending on where you're based, so that you can access those grants that are available for you. Because there are still a lot of businesses who, who don't think that that money is there for them or that they don't know how to access it and we we can help with that brilliant thanks lawrence that's really great thank you um so talking about furlough then um sharon if i could come to you please um question for you is um is are you able to give a summary on furlough what what that actually means to a business Yes. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, furloughing, a new word, really, isn't it, for 2020? Lots of people um, hadn't uh, heard it, heard of it or used it perhaps very much. Um, and all of a sudden it's there in uh, everyday life. Furloughing, furloughed, fur to furlough. Um, so furlough is, um, is a form, it's a leave of absence. And this was introduced by the government um, as part of their coronavirus uh, job retention scheme. So it is available to all UK businesses and for all staff, including apprentices, um, those employed before the 19th of March. So they extended that. So originally the date was the 28th of February, 2020, and they extended it. So employed on or before the 19th of March of this year. And um, the latest government statement has actually taken that furloughing period through to the 30th of June. There are some documents that you can refer to. And for businesses, these, are, these should be your Bibles. They're dynamic documents. They're changing sometimes on an hourly basis. More than happy to share those links with you, Emily, um, after today's uh, webinar so that you can share them with attendees. Brilliant. So, um, so an, uh, a furloughed uh, member of staff or uh, an employee, they remain part of the um, employer's um, payroll, um, but the government obviously is paying 80% of those wages. And one of the things to remember is that furloughed apprentices can continue with their programme and they should be encouraged to continue with their programme. And training providers such as South Devon College are doing a fantastic job in keeping those apprentices engaged online, on programme. And in fact, it's actually a real opportunity to make the most of that 20% off the job training and getting that all um, packed in and get done so that when we get back to some semblance of normality, they can actually hit the ground running and support their employers. Um, what I wanted to say is with um, apprentices who are furloughed, they cannot um, do work which would actually generate income, okay, or to uh, produce or deliver a service for that employer, but they can do training. And there has been um, government clarification on this. I know that a number of employers um, were very concerned about whether they should um, go with a break in learning or whether they should go for furloughing and stuff. Break in learning, absolutely last sort of like resort really go with the um uh, um uh um furloughing of your apprentices keep them on program and keep talking to your training providers because they actually know what they can and they can't deliver so um i would say at the moment um it's really important that we keep some business continuity we keep those apprentices on program because we're going to need people with skills when we start to emerge into recovery yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Sharon. And they're really, really, really important and key messages. Um, so I guess you've answered a lot around um, the furloughing. The next question I'd like to ask you is if, if, um, if businesses are looking to perhaps take on an apprentice during this time, um, you know, can they, what would you suggest? What do you recommend? Yeah, um, we've had, um, there is, um, there has been a thought was, are business going to take on apprentices? There are going to be some sectors that are not going to be looking at recruitment and recruitment has paused, but there are other sectors where that is not the case. So absolutely, if you're an employer and you're looking to um, take on an apprentice, speak to Emily and the team at South Devon College, or you can come through to me at inquiries at trainingprovider.com and we can sign post you um, to um, a specific uh, training provider. But absolutely, taking on an apprentice can be done now. And please 
don't think that it, 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 that it can't. We have a number of live vacancies on the Find an Apprenticeship website, which is actually just being cle and cleansed by the uh, DFE. Um, so there's not as many um, vacancies on there as normal, Emily, you'll notice those. Um, but we do actually have quite a few. And as you can imagine, we've got quite a few in the healthcare sector that are currently um, live. So absolutely, if you're interested in taking on an apprentice, please don't delay, give Emily a ring. Brilliant. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you so much. Um, so now we've got Keith, Keith Miller. Um, he is the managing director of uh, Cavana Homes. Um, and I've got some key questions here for you, Keith, if you don't mind. Um, are you able just to tell us firstly around um, your apprenticeship programme at Cavana Homes, how you manage your apprentices and what they mean to your business? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, in February 2019, I think we welcomed our largest intake of apprentices in our 96 year history. Um, I think myself and the board recognised the needs of the industry. Um, personally, for me, I mean, I started my career, don't laugh, but in the late 80s um, uh, as an apprentice bricklayer. So, you know, the, the, the sort of, I'm keen to champion the drive to increase the intake, certainly in, in the businesses that I work with. Um, and to ensure that the company trains and invests in individuals correctly. I mean, that is key. You know, it's, the apprentices aren't just there as cheap labour. We need to ensure that we, 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 you know, we nurture them and we keep them safe and we, and we actually train them to do a job. And then we, you know, we continue with that role as they go through the career. Um, so 2019, we took on 11 apprentices um, aged between 16 and 23. And since then, we've recruited another two. Um, we have apprentices based out on site and also in our head office in Torquay. Um, and I, I'd say with, with ideal market conditions permitting, I'd like to sort of have a run rate of about 20 apprentices at any one time in the future as a business, uh, which is quite significant given you know the, 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 our direct employees are about 140, 145 at the moment. Um, but you know I do see it as the future for the industry. Um, I think the, you know we, we definitely recognise that as an employer in the construction industry we play a, a fundamental part in ensuring the skills and the future talents are being brought through. Um, our apprentices, as you know, you know with, with, with the support of South Devon College, which I have to say is fantastic, um, we're completing qualifications in a range of specialist sectors: carpentry, land land buying, estimating, plumbing, quantity surveying. You know we, we're off, we're opening up the apprenticeship to to every every part of the business world. Um, and again, I'm saying that the, the, the future of the industry, you know, is in apprentices. Um, I don't know where he's top the, 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 there's a, a stat that's out there at the moment from the Office of National Statistics that says that 47% 40, of the construction workers are over 45 years of age, which is a really worrying statistic. Particularly when you when you when you recognise that only eleven percent of construction workers are aged between sixteen and twenty-four. So, you know, it, it's there's gonna be a huge skills shortage if we don't sort of pick pick this up and, and run with it quickly. Um, you know, and what that will mean to apprentices, and we should be shouting this, is there's a lot of money to be made out there because there will be a skills shortage. There's no two ways about that. Um so you know, it, it is a great career to get into. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank, thanks, Keith. Um, so how, how is the business managing the apprentices then during this time? Um, oh, yeah, well, it, it, it's challenging. It's challenging for everybody, isn't it? Um, but given the current circumstances, all our apprentices, along with about 80% of the rest of the team, are on furlough at the moment. Um, however, you know, as I said earlier, we, we've equipped them with plenty of reading materials and coursework from the college. And they're attending. They're obviously hoping to carry on going towards their MVQs. Um, we've set up a, a Cabana Homes Hardship Fund for all our employees, um, which obviously includes apprentices. Um, so this um, provides, amongst other things, financial support to those that need it during this, these difficult times, and that's easily accessible. Um, and as soon as it's safe to do so, we'll reinstate all our apprentices. And ensure that they get the great experience working with us and we can give them all the exposure we can to the industry as a whole really brilliant and um, what would you um how, how would you reassure other fellow businesses at this point in time um with perhaps having apprentices or thinking of even taking on apprentices 
Do you have any well, sort of advice? What, what, we're, what we're doing is, you know, we, 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 um, we're in contact. Um, we were all in, we were in contact with our apprentices before we shut the doors temporarily, um, and we assured them then that once we we can safely open up again, uh, we'll welcome them back with open arms. Um, we've obtained everybody's personal email addresses. We have set up SMS messaging, Facebook pages, WhatsApp groups have been established. So we're trying to sort of maintain that communication to make sure everybody's okay and has got the support. Um, HR are in regular contact with the apprentices to ensure they're okay. And I issue a, a weekly um, company briefing to everybody, uh, which covers the important government updates and also updates on the hard work being carried out in preparation for kickstarting the company back up again. So, you know, it's, it's all about just trying to stay communicated with them and making sure that they've got the, the, what they need to continue their, their learning, really, whilst off the job. Brilliant. I mean, I guess that is the key thing here. It's communication, isn't it, for everybody um, during these times. Um, so how, how, how has construction been impacted then in general, just from a construction industry perspective? It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because although uh, the governments have said that um, they haven't specifically closed down the construction, construction industry because it's, it's deemed as a relatively safe place to work because you're out in the, in the open, um, but the, the industry almost shut itself down. Uh, the, 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 the PLCs closed the doors. The, 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 the big thing is we, we stopped getting materials. Um, the, 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 the material suppliers stopped. So ultimately, we, we all shut our doors probably end, end, you know, middle end of, um, end of March. Um, so I say most of the sites across the UK are currently closed and construction workers are being placed on furlough. And that will continue until it's safe to go back to work. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose the, the concern is, is the you know the, there's a shortage of construction workers and skilled trades, and the sec and the sector is experiencing a shortage of materials, which even before the shutdown. Um, but now that all the major suppliers are closed, I'm sure that even when we do get back to reopen the doors, that uh, that's going to be certainly worse in the short term. Um, but you know, it's it's challenging times for everybody at the moment. Um, not just our industry, but every industry. But I think, you know, in all these things, there's, there's, there's lessons to learn. And, you know, providing we come back stronger and wiser, you know, we can pick the, pick the country back up again. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks so much, Keith. That's some really good, important messages. Um, in terms of um, reaching out to the community, what are Cabana Homes doing to reach out to the community currently? Yeah, well, we're, 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 we've set up sort of um, working partnerships with interior designers. Um, we're engaging through blogs and, and sort of pushing out sort of mini makeovers for everybody uh, on our websites and social media. Um, we're encouraging staff to encourage um, to, to go in to um, help others through volunteering. And I know some are doing that. Um, we've donated, although we didn't have a lot at the time, we've donated what PPE we had amassed to um, the to Bay Hospital. Uh, to help the NHS as best we could. Um, and the Cabana Group, are, um, I mean, we've always been keen to support the community. And, and as we speak, both myself and Jonathan Cabana are in communication with a number of local food banks and support agencies, including um, Reform, um, with a view to providing financial and professional support in the very short term. So, you know, over the next couple of weeks, we're looking to sort of what we can, of course, the, the business is on shutdown. So, you know, like everybody else, we're looking our, over, over our shoulder, but um, we're trying to do our best for the, for the local community, really. Brilliant. Thanks, Keith. And it sounds like we're all working in collaboration there as well, which is um, which is really good to hear. Um, so we've just lost Sharon. I think she's just dropped out. So I'm hoping she'll rejoin us um, shortly. Um, but we're going to go um, on to Jonathan Holmes um, from Blenheims. So Jonathan, um, really keen to know how you guys are managing your apprentices as well. Um, and just generally how you support apprentices um, within your business um, during this really challenging time. Morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Emily. Um, we've been very fortunate that uh, our business is pretty much operating as normal. Um, in fact, we're busier than ever with, uh, we manage uh, residential apartment buildings and housing developments in London across the Southwest. And uh, with everyone being at home, everyone's using the services. Uh, so 
uh, our entire workforce, uh, we, we uh, moved them to remote working very early on, uh, and that includes all of our apprentices. Uh, so we've been in a, fortunate, uh, in a very fortunate position that we've not been required to, uh, uh, to furlough anyone. Um, in, in terms of the apprentices, they're uh, the lifeblood of our organization. They are um, you know, future-proofing the business uh, and um, they're, they're operating normally. Uh, in, in terms of their sort of day-to-day, -day, it's, it's keeping them motivated um, because we've got 85 staff uh, all working from home effectively. Um, we're doing a lot of um, uh, video conferencing calls uh, and one-to-ones with the uh, apprentices uh, and uh, keeping them uh, motivated as well. So we're using Microsoft Teams, we're using Zoom. Uh, we run a competition in the mornings who can get online first uh, <laughs> so that they're not sleeping in. So it's, uh, it's keeping them motivated and, uh, and in check. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, um, it's working really well actually and su surprisingly well. Um, uh, you know, and uh, it's, you know, that's the thing about business, isn't it? You have to adapt very quickly. And, um, you know, I think we've been able to do that quite successfully with, uh, you know, with the team being dispersed, um, but also very much um, uh, close together. So, yeah, it's, it's going well at the moment. Brilliant. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, and you mentioned one of your apprentices started um, their online learning. Was it last week or this week? Yeah. <laughs> Their first day last week is amazing, isn't it? So even during lockdown, they're online. They're starting their first day, and and you know, and and the journey of uh, of the apprenticeship course. So uh, yeah, re um, you know, it's really really exciting to uh, um, you know to see that it's uh, business as normal, and they're able to use the online uh, learning skills that you were uh, talking about earlier. So they're you know exciting for them. They're at the very start of their journey. We've got. Um, uh, five apprentices in total. We have four doing um, uh, level three or level four AAT in our accounts department, and we have another apprentice who is just completing their apprenticeship at their endpoint assessment. So they're coming to the, the end of the journey and then the start of their uh, integration and, and working uh, you know, working career with um, uh, with Blenheim. So um, we're seeing uh, both sides of the spectrum, seeing the end point, at the kind of back end and the um, the first day last week for uh, for a, a new apprentice. So uh, yeah, it's fantastic to watch them. And uh, um, you know, we uh, we feed off their enthusiasm and their, um, you know, thirst for learning. And, and um, you know, they're so enthusiastic. It's they're they're great to work for and they're great for any business. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so is there anything that you would advise fellow businesses um, within perhaps your sector or just generally around current times and how to support apprentices? What what would you recommend? Um, you know, obviously you've just taken on or just um, allowed another employee to start an apprenticeship. Um, clearly it hasn't been a barrier for you guys. Um, so is there any advice that you, you would give? No, communication is key. Um, you know, even though you're not physically uh, together in an office environment, um, it's really important that uh, all, all of our apprentices actually are, um, are quite young. So it's really important that they have that support. Um, we're doing a lot of um, uh, well-being and mindfulness work with, uh, with all of our staff at the moment. Uh, so we're doing uh, uh, lo lots of fun things to keep them motivated, quizzes, uh, bingo. Um, we do a bar Blenheims and, and all sorts of things. So uh, it's um, uh, it's keeping them motivated, uh, um, you know, mentally. Uh, we they each have their buddies and their uh, their mentors, so they're having uh, two or three uh, touch points a day in terms of their uh, conference calling. Uh, because of a lot of the jobs that they do are process driven, they are. Um, if they do have a quiet period during the day, um, we're encouraging them to pick up their um, off-the-job uh, learning so they can go back onto their learning courses and, and effectively get the books online. Uh, so we're encouraging them uh, uh, to do that if they do have a quiet period during the day. Um, but also, you know, as a business, we've got to look to the future and, uh, you know, um, I think, you know, a lot of things will change uh, uh, going forward. Um, and, uh, you know, some things may change for the better. You know, we're all using online more and we've had to uh, had to adapt. 
Um, but we have to look at some um, succession planning and, and future proofing the business. So, you know, we have um, we, we have the current crisis, but we will be through that. And we're looking at beyond that as well, the other side. So, um, you know, it is almost the perfect time to be looking at apprentices, uh, you know, if you're planning over the next three, six months and how you're going to move forward and how you're going to bring in uh, fresh talent into the uh, into the company and business going forward. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Um, and well, thanks to all of you. Um, we have got time for some some questions very shortly because um, we've had a couple come in. Um, just quickly, I just want to to let you all know, reassure you all that, um, as Lawrence said, we are gathering as much intel from businesses as we possibly can during this time, um, which will feed into future webinars. So we're really, really keen to keep and continue these going um, throughout this time. Um, I think the next one's going to feature around digital. Um, so how to work digi digi digitally um, in this new world. Um, so, so watch out for those, um, please, because they'll be they'll be a good watch, hopefully. Um, the other thing to mention is if you do have any questions outside of um, this, this session, please do email the employers at southdevon.ac.uk um, because we will get back to you very quickly. Um, the team are on that email um, and they can respond within 24 hours, um, so, so please use it. So one of the questions that um, I have got, and I know Lawrence mentioned it um, at the beginning, but it's around the support for employers. Um, we do know that there is availability, that employers perhaps aren't accessing this support. Um, can I ask Keith and um, Jonathan, are you currently accessing support um, that you're perhaps eligible for? And you know, is there any advice that you could give to other employers around that? Um. We're not accessing it, as far as I'm aware. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, keen to learn more, but um, no, we're not at the moment, Emily. Okay, okay. What about you, Keith? Uh, at the moment, all, all we 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 looked at the sort of C bills, sort of loan schemes and things. We we as a business, we sort of fell between two stools on that, um, and I actually didn't didn't felt feel at the time it benefited us. Now things have changed a little bit since then, and I know our, our FD is is looking at sort of what is out there from a loans point of view but um other than the, the fellow scheme uh, we're not we're not seeking any other further support at the moment um you know we we, we are you know to be fair that the banks uh the, the bank the bank that we we operate with has been absolutely fantastic uh and um you know they, they they've they've worked with us to make sure that we we come out of this other side strong and and, and ready to go again so um we, we you know we, we we're I think we're in a quite fortunate situation where we haven't needed to, to push for sort of government loans and things because um, because the status of the business at the time we went into furlough really so yeah okay okay well that's um that's certainly good feedback and uh, Jonathan perhaps there is some support so um please check out the the relevant websites um the other one was around pay apprentice pay um I think there was a a, a question around um what should that look like um, if they're furloughed? Um, so I guess I wonder whether Sharon, you could pick this one up, please. Yes, certainly, Emily. Uh, one of the things that um, there's been a bit of confusion about is what an apprentice should be paid. And so the whole whilst furloughed. So if a, an apprentice is furloughed and uh, the employer um, goes down the route of that 80 percent for the time that they're furloughed, whilst they're training, though, they're uh, pay has to be topped up to that apprentice national minimum wage. OK, so if an apprentice is furloughed and their pay um, and their the the hourly rate for that apprentice is normally four pounds 15 an hour, they'll receive 80 percent of that. OK, uh, under the furlough scheme. However, if their employer doesn't take the option to top that up, that means that their hourly wage, wage would reduce to that um, £3.32, which is below the uh, apprentice national minimum wage. However, what, on during the time that they're doing their training, so if they're training one day a week, for those hours that they're training, their wage needs to be topped up. OK, we have some worked examples of that. So um, there is an uplift of um, 83 pence an hour um, uplift, which would be needed for an apprentice who's training. So their only um, uplift happens when they're training, not for the rest of the week. 
OK, so a lot of employers have got a bit confused about that. So it's furloughed 80 percent. But if they're training one day, two days a week for the time that they're training, their salary is popped up to that apprenticeship national minimum wage. Sharon, you've dropped out again, I think. So. Yeah, the um, for some reason, Plymouth is not doing well in the Internet. Uh, the connectivity states this morning, we, it pushed me out completely. I have a couple of worked models which I'll share with you and then you can share them with participants. Yeah, and that's and that's what we need to do. So there's a couple of worked examples that we've got um, uh, whereby you can see that uh, remembering as well um, that. Um, the site went live yesterday. I don't know if any of you um, tried to get on to um, push things through uh, on HMRC. Did you did you do anything, Keith? I, I don't I don't think so. No, I think uh, I've left that to the financial guys to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 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 husband's at work this morning trying to push it all through. So, um, but I I think they were taking a huge volume, huge volume. I think what, whilst we're waiting for Emily, I think Lawrence will agree. It's fantastic that um, we've got two employers on the um, the line here this morning who are both so positive about apprenticeships and the value that they're bringing to their organisations and the fact that you're keeping them on. Um, one of the things with regards to this, uh, this current pandemic, this current crisis, is the um, impact it will have on recruitment of apprentices. It will have an impact. We've got um, a whole load of young people about to leave school in the summer who were going to take up apprentices those year 11s and it's about what do we or where do we signpost those young people no south devon college i've got a whole raft of support in place for those who were perhaps thinking about doing an apprenticeship that apprenticeship might be on pause at the moment but that doesn't mean to say that they can't go to somewhere like south devon college take up study program in um, uh, one of the topics one of the subject areas that they're interested in doing the apprenticeship in and then transferring at a later date um, would you agree with that lawrence yeah, absolutely, Sharon. And I think what we're, that's part of the reason we are focusing on our virtual open events, because um, we want to keep all young people, particularly our year 11s, engaged. Um, there will be a lot of apprentices who aren't sure whether they're going to be able to go into an apprenticeship now. Employers don't know whether they're going to be able to take on new apprentices. So it was really great to hear um, Keith saying and, and, and Jonathan as well that there are uh, new apprentices starting and that they want more. I, th I still think that an apprenticeship is a really great uh, way of resolving workforce issues, particularly as we come out of a lockdown and, and the current crisis um, and we start to get into recovery. You know, apprentices um, of any age age they, they bring so much to the business and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys you've already said that um, but if if there aren't apprenticeships out there we're putting together alternative programs we're also thinking about those young people who are coming out of further education so there are 18 who may themselves be going into apprentices perhaps at a higher level what will they be doing will there be the jobs for them out there because there's a lot of people going to be looking for work so i think we're not sure what all that looks like which is why we're really keen to keep in touch with our business community with our employer partners um, and it's great to have uh, two really um, great champions of, of apprenticeships and training sat here with us this morning but the the employers at southdevon.ac.uk which is hopefully on your screens at the bottom there. You can see, do email us there. As I say, social media, we'd, we'd love to get some conversations going about a, a wider discussion about the Torbay and South Devon economy and how we kind of all come together to quickly get that back on. We're seeing so much innovation out there. It's been really impressive. Businesses moving to online delivery very quickly, takeaways doing home deliveries, even wholesale food um, organisations uh, moving to the retail sector to to respond to some of the gaps that have appeared there with with the way the high street is at the moment. Um, so I think there's lots that we can do. But we one thing that I think has been a, um, a real silver lining to this uh, quite challenging and, and sometimes very difficult and sad situation is that people have come together. We've made we've forged new relationships, different ways of working. We've had some brilliant conversations. And actually, despite some of the threats and challenges that we're all going to be facing, there are some really big opportunities out there. Um, and I thought what, what Keith said, as long as we kind of learn from it and come out stronger and wiser, I thought that was brilliant. I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that shamelessly, Keith, if you don't mind. Um, you know, I think there's a lot for us to take from this. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really, really important that that collaboration and that partnership working um, continues with the FE colleges, the independent sector, the employers, and obviously um, the young people within our communities. We've had lots of talk about mental health and about how to keep people um, strong, resilient, and some of our young people perhaps are going through a period of time where they can't have what they want immediately. Some of us who were brought up in the 70s, we know we did have power cuts. We did have, you know, no sugar on the shelves at one stage and having to and candlelight and no internet um so for a lot of our young people this is a very strange time for them a very very worrying time and i really liked keith's um point about keeping uh, in touch with his apprentices and i think that's absolutely key is how do we keep people uh, uh engaged um and feeling safe and actually knowing what's happening and i think keith you'll agree it's really important for you for your workforce that they actually feel that you're committed to them still Absolutely, and you know, I'm getting I'm getting text messages from people's personal phones and things. You know, just just wanting to know almost daily what's going on. You know, I I I put I push a note out to everybody once a week, um, but that's almost doesn't feel enough. You know, because the, the, the problem if you, if you if you did that more regularly, the, 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 you'd have nothing to say. So at least once a week, it, there's something meaningful in there. You know, and. And the, the, the great work that I've got, the guys that aren't on furlough, you know, we're, we're planning the business, we're planning what it's going to look like when we come out, how we're going to, how we're going to restart again. Um, and, you know, we're communicating that right through, we're not holding anything back, because there's got to be some hope value in that as well. That, you know, pe people just want to get back to work. Um, and, you know, some, some, some are climbing the walls and, you know, I'm quite fortunate, so all my kids have left home and everything else. And, my wife and I get on quite well, but you can imagine that uh, <laughs> others aren't so fortunate. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think the willingness from everybody to get back is 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 amazing, and, and I think um, everyone just wants to know where they stand and where the company's going. So that, that's what we're trying to just communicate that through. But we're doing it through Facebook, we're doing it through WhatsApp with the guys. Some of the directors are still working and making sure they bring the senior management team once a week, and we're asking them to bring their their teams, and you know, and just. Just keep everybody motivated, and, uh, and and mental health, as you say, is a, is a major issue. And and people are feeling down. You know, we all have our down days during this lockdown, and you know, it's just making sure that you're talking to each other. Yeah, I, I would agree with that there's a there's a lot that we're we're doing that, that reflects some of the things that Keith and and, and Jonathan said. Um, I would say if if you've got uh, other workforce who are not apprentices who are furloughed. Um, and that they can still train, obviously. There are lots of um, free courses or no-cost courses that are subsidised um, around mental health, around resilience, um, and there's some other kind of basic stuff. Uh, it shouldn't cost the employer, it shouldn't cost the individual anything to do. Um, it's worth having a look, not just at the South Devon College website, although obviously I'd love you to have a look at what we're offering. We've got a great range and a huge um, take up at the moment of that, but there is plenty else out there, and I'd certainly encourage, particularly around some of the mental health um, work uh, for, for line managers, for supervisors. I think I think uh, Keith's absolutely right. That's going to be even more critical when when we come back um, back to something that's a bit more normal. But it's also useful with what's happening at the moment. So if there's anything we can we can support with businesses and employers and your your employees, we would be really happy to do that. I think we're uh, uh, conscious of is that um, our five apprentices are at the moment are all sort of, um, I guess, between sort of 18 and 21, 22. Um, but something that's come up in other uh, sessions has been, uh, sorry, I've got another call coming through, I apologise, uh, is um, uh, looking, we've got quite a diverse business and uh, diverse uh, uh, age group uh, in terms of our um, workforce. Uh, so uh, it's looking at opportunities for um, uh, uh, existing members of staff to cross skill as well. So whilst it's bringing in people from the bottom, it's also looking at, um, uh, um, at where the existing uh, workforce is and developing people's careers and encouraging them if they want to take a, an apprenticeship course, um, you know, partway through their career in another aspect of the um, uh, of, of the, uh, the business for their development. So I think it's important to recognise that um, uh, in, you know, it's not just the, the young, uh, existing staff um, can look at those apprenticeship schemes as well if, if, if that's um, in, uh, in line with their career plan. 
Yeah, um, upskilling um, existing workforce using apprenticeship, especially if you're going to look at some of those, you know, we've got a lot of managers, you'll have managers that are in your organisations that are perhaps are what we call accidental managers, they've come through the ranks, they've worked their way up, but they don't actually have any formal uh, qualification or any formal support uh, in the position that they have actually found themselves in. Um, so uh, people like South Devon College uh, can offer to um, those uh, older members of staff who wish to um, become um, uh, apprentices, you can do uh, leadership management. It's a whole range of high level skills for existing workers. Broadband connections got the better of some of us. Um, so on, on behalf of the college, can I thank um, all of you, particularly uh, Keith, Jonathan and Sharon for supporting us this morning. Um, and to everybody who's joined us online, um, thank you for signing up. Thank you for listening in. I really hope that this has been useful this morning. Um, we are going to keep doing more of these, but we only want to do them where they add value. Um, so do feed through to us. The employers at southdevon.ac.uk is a great way to get in touch. But if there's things that we're not talking about, we can do slightly shorter webinars if that's more useful and focus on specific areas. Um, we're really happy to do that. It needs to be, it needs to be valuable. Everyone's still very busy despite working from home. So thank you to everybody, and I think we'll bring it to an end. Um, to an end there, I better message Emily and let her know. <laughs>